The only black Republican candidate for president is taking on the man many consider the leading candidate all over a word. The Washington Post is reporting today that Texas Governor Rick Perry once leased a hunting camp that had the word nigger painted on a rock at its entrance. It was niggerhead, of course. That's what, that's what the word was, the name of that camp. Well, the Post reports that witnesses say the word was not removed for years while Perry visited the place. Perry says that is inaccurate. But his opponent, Herman Cain, says Perry showed a, quote, lack of sensitivity for not removing the N-word sooner. And joining me now, Goldie Taylor, the editor at large for thegrio.com and an independent political analyst. Goldie, this is very interesting. So can you can say that Cain is taking a stand against Perry on the N-word. Um, it's a negative for Cain? Why do you say that? Explain. You know, at the end of the day, a if you... A negative for Cain. A negative for Cain. You know, when you're in a GOP primary, that is not the place to talk about biases of any kind. And if you are the candidate that people are using to assuage any guilt or assuage any conversation they would not want to have about race, far be it for you to lodge an attack on someone else in the race as being insensitive or even racist. You can't... You can't... You can't okay, I get what you're saying. So, is an African-American candidate. He can't really talk about race the same way um, Mitt Romney can't talk about Mormonism. Is that the same way Mitt okay. Romney can't talk about and religious even respond bias to it. or even really respond to it? And so Herman Cain is really in a tight corner here. How does he not react to something you know so vile, so despicable? And then how does he react in a way that doesn't offend the GOP base? You know, today the GOP is largely controlled, you know, by Southern white males. The last thing they want to talk about. Is race it's in race. America. So he has to be careful. All right. Kane has been in the thick of it this week. Uh, he took a lot of heat and a statement that he made on CNN. Take a listen. Many African Americans have been brainwashed into not being open minded, not even considering a conservative point of view. I have received some of that same vitriol simply because I am running for the Republican nomination as a conservative. So it's just brainwashing and people not being open minded, pure and simple. All right, and that set off another guest, Cornell Belcher, a political analyst for CNN. If I came on your show, Anderson, and I said, uh, all Jews, Jewish people are brainwashed, I probably wouldn't be invited back to CNN. What Herman Cain said was a racist, bigoted statement, and he should be treated like a racist and bigoted person who makes racist and bigoted statements. All right, what's your take on Cain's brainwashing comment? Is it... Is it racist? I think that, if anything, he's not racist, but he's out of touch. Okay. This has less to do with African Americans being so-called brainwashed as it does with generational party alignment. Back in the late 60s, when the Civil Rights Act was passed, it was done by a Democratic president. African Americans and others have routinely rewarded people in the White House and the party who they see as advancing their gains. So that's what happened in the 60s. And then Nixon came along with the Southern strategy. And that solidified Dixiecrats over into the Republican Party and African American state Democratic for the next several generations. Dixiecrats. I Dixie heard Kratz. that in a long time. Yeah. Dixiecrats. And then what did Republicans do? They doubled down on the Southern strategy. It was successful for them in this. They have gained governorships. They have gained state houses. They have gained U.S. Senate seats and congressional seats. It's been a real winner for them. Hmm. So why backtrack now? And on this topic, you have been observing a, a trend that's happening online right now. And it links Kane with Uncle Ruckus from the Boone. Docs. I have. Um, it's like this video. There it is on YouTube. That's what he looks like. Explain this and what it may tell you about public opinion of Herman Cain. Well, first of all, I've seen this an awful lot. I've seen it in uh, in the public square. I've seen it on social networks. You know, I'm very much familiar with the boondocks boom Docs in the cartoon. This particular instance is as deplorable as the niggerhead mm -hmm. content being painted on a rock uh, for uh, Rick Perry's Hunt Club. You know, but for Cain. He is seen in this race as the grand accommodator, mm -hmm. much like Booker T. Washington was seen as that way at the turn of the century. And so to accommodate those people who would not see the advancement of African Americans mm -hmm. or participate in the advancement of African Americans is a very bad thing for him. And for him to come out and say that I, Herman Cain, because I'm black, I can gain 30 percent of the African American vote is outright fantastical. Yeah, I asked him about that and got, I asked him about race when I saw him at the Iowa straw poll and I got a lot of comments. Like, I can't believe you asked Herman Cain about race because he's a black man and it's like, Herman okay. Cain has talked more about there race you go. Thank <laughs> than you. anybody. And you know, our last conversation we talked about 
uh, leaders, African Americans and African American leaders criticizing the president. You know, the first thing, this is very interesting, I was in LA for sure. the trial of Michael Jackson. The first thing Joe Jackson said to me is like, why are you getting on President Obama? Why are you, why are you going after President Obama? I said, I'm a reporter, I'm not an advocate. I'm just doing the report. What does that say? Does that sort of prove the point we're saying about it's difficult to criticize a black president? It is difficult to criticize an African American president. We are the kind of people who will circle the wagons no matter what the criticism is, you know, whether it's valid or not valid, and you're going to see a lot more that play out as this election wears on. It's amazing. It, it's just amazing to me that these people, I think, forget that we are not advocates. We are journalists, and we have to report we ought to on be, the news. We, as yeah. a people, we ought to be about looking after our own interests, yeah. no matter who's in the White House. Thank you very much, Goldie. Always a great conversation. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me.